y'all feel if when I walked out here just now, I tripped and fell on the stage? Just like... <laughs> probably a little concerned, right? <laughs> a little uneasy, worried about my well-being, mentally and physically. <laughs> but why? Why do we care about other people? Why do we care about people we don't even know? There's three big reasons why I think we care about other people. Reason one, it's human nature. It's a part of who we are, it's in our DNA, and it's how we made it this far as a species. We can't help it. Reason two, we care about other people. It feels really good. It feels really good to do a nice thing for somebody else, to be kind to other people. It's endorphins. It's a feeling that is impossible to duplicate any other way. Reason three why we care about other people, society functions better when we do. When we build systems where everyone has access to housing, and where everyone has access to enough food to eat, enough childcare, enough education, etc., that doesn't just benefit us, and it doesn't just benefit the people we know, it benefits folks in the wider world. And whether or not we understand it yet or choose to believe it, we are all connected. And what happens to other people absolutely affects us. Join me on a journey back in time for a moment to the year 2010. We're talking two years following a global financial crisis and Lady Gaga's meat dress. 2010, it was a rough year for me personally. I was working multiple jobs. A typical day for me involved getting to work by 6 a.m. and getting done by 10 p.m. All to wake up again tomorrow and work from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Because I worked two jobs, I made about $40 to $80 too much every month to qualify for any sort of food stamps or rental assistance, both of which I really needed. I couldn't cut a shift at work because they'd take me off the schedule. I asked. Because I work two jobs, I would love to have visited local food pantries, but I work two jobs. They were closed when I got done with work at 10 at night. It was a rare moment when I had a day off and was able to visit a pantry during limited hours. I felt hopeless. I felt stuck. And I felt like I couldn't pull myself up by my bootstraps any more than I was already pulling. The funny thing about that phrase, I didn't know this until I looked it up, but it literally originated to describe doing the impossible. You can't, it's, it doesn't work. So I struggled. I struggled alone most of the time out of shame and just not knowing where to turn. And I wanted to die all the time. Flash forward to today, and I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm still here. Thankfully now, there are systems that didn't exist, at least I didn't know about them back in 2010, but they would have really helped me and I would have utilized the crap out of them. <laughs> it's not an original idea. These have been built and are thriving all around the world, but they are an idea I think is worth talking about called a community refrigerator, or as we call it in the Midwest, a community fridge. <laughs> a community refrigerator is a place that someone who gets done with work at 10 p.m. can visit because most of them are open 24-7, 365. They're there for folks who are often overlooked by traditional food pantries. 
They ask no questions whatsoever. They know, this is a big thing, people in need, they know best what they need. And community fridges understand that. They trust that the folks visiting know to take what they need and leave what they can. And the beautiful thing is, that happens every day. Community fridges, there's no restrictions regarding who can visit, how often they can visit, or how much they can take with them. If someone were to visit a community fridge and empty out all of its contents in one visit, wonderful. Perhaps now that person can afford to repair their vehicle or visit the dentist. Maybe they'll just get to eat well for the first time in weeks. Maybe they'll just feel a little bit less like killing themselves that day. Community fridges, they're a valuable resource to any community. They help folks without identification. They're there for folks who are in between limited visits to other food pantries. Often, food pantries have a once every two weeks or once a month limit. They're there for people who are on a limited income, like disability or social security. They're there for kids who are on their way to school or on their way home from sports practice and want to pop in for a Gatorade if it's there. They're there for anybody who had an unexpected expense come up this month. That could be literally any of us at any time. That's the beauty of community fridges. They're a place of love and lack of judgment. They're filled not by magic, but by people. <laughs> They're filled by the communities, by folks with means to do so out of their own pocket, but also by folks who might not have financial means, but have some time that they can give to community shop for the fridge, or restaurants that donate extravagant meals to our fridges. They're there for folks to donate that have organized their own donation drives. We've had a festival recently, a brewery, um, a martial arts school, a soccer club, schools doing, they still do penny wars, did y'all know that? I didn't know that. But <laughs> they've set up penny wars for the community fridges in our area. Anybody can take the initiative and the bar for entry into participating in and helping your community through a community refrigerator is so low and that's part of the beauty of it. Community fridges, they're simple. They're scalable. They're super easy to build. They can be built in one day. In most communities, this can be done without much regulation, if any. We didn't have to apply for any permits before we built. We don't have to pay, and nobody has to pay rent or salaries on these things. They share an address with the residents or the business. They're mutual aid, so not a nonprofit, um, not charity, but they're just neighbors helping neighbors in the spirit of community. Community fridges are unconventional and the best kind of weird. They disrupt the status quo and they bring attention to how much our current white supremacist, patriarchal, and capitalist systems are currently failing our people in real time. They also provide opportunities for us to do something about it. Community fridges provide opportunities for us to practice building community, to practice listening to each other, to practice empathy, and empathy is a skill that can be learned and it does take practice. If anybody here is wondering why billionaires aren't solving world hunger, they haven't practiced empathy. You don't just automatically start being empathetic. It's start folks when they're young and a community fridge is a great way to do that. They're also a place and a way for us to practice <sighs> building community and connecting with each other in unconventional ways. Community fridges are adaptable. They're ready to quickly pivot to meet the ever-changing needs of their community faster than most nonprofits could. 
For example, in response to a Supreme Court decision that overturned our basic human right to access an abortion in the United States, our indoor community fridge pantry is now fully stocked with free make-a-plan reproductive health kits for anyone to take with them. These kits include a dose of Plan B, six condoms, and a pregnancy test. This happened for our community because the need was there and because a community member who knew about our community fridge project mentioned it when they met for coffee with one of the coordinators of Planned Parenthood. Community organizing made that possible for us and it can happen for you too in your communities. If you'd like to organize a community fridge in your town, reach out to several of the thriving community fridges across the world and ask them for guidance. Ask them how they did it. Ask them to share their build plans with you or to answer any other questions you might have. In addition to asking questions, ask your community for help. When we first asked, does anyone want to host a community fridge outside of their house? A lot of people were like, what? <laughs> but a lot of folks were like, I don't have a house, but I'd love to help build it. And I'd love to help paint it. And I'd love to help keep it full of food once it's built. We had no idea how many people would come out of the woodwork until we asked for help and the help arrived. Everybody deserves to know where their next meal is coming from. And people in need, they know best what they need. Let's talk to them. Let's listen to them. Let's continue to work towards a world where community fridges are eventually obsolete because everybody already has enough to eat. Thank you.